But I just, uh, I'll finish uh, with a couple of um, comments on, on, on how I got to where I am. But uh, if you can ever get hold of a book called Advice to a Young Scientist, written by Peter Medua, who is um, uh, won the Nobel Prize, uh, it is a wonderful book. And I particularly like this quote. And if you can't read it from the back, I'll read it out. One, he says, one does not need to be terrifically brainy to be a good scientist. Most people who are, in fact, scientists could easily have been something else in set, instead. And that is certainly true for me. I, did very, I dropped biology at the age of 14, found it boring. Probably says more about my teachers than it does about the subject. And for A-level, I did maths, physics, chemistry, and art. And I had to do art at art school because they wouldn't let me do it. So my first choice of a career was going to be art, until my art teacher took me aside and said, look, you're not bad, but you're really not good enough to make a career out of this, so choose something different. Good advice. Um, my second choice was physics, and apologies to anybody, uh, uh, sorry, maths, apologies to anybody uh, who's going to study maths, because I went to a few open days, and they all seemed a bit nerdy, so in the end, um, <laughs> sorry about that, I take that all back now, it's not true. So in the end, um, I studied physiology um, uh, at the University of London. I went to London for the only reason that I came from a little village and wanted to go to a big city. There was no other reason. I went to what was Queen Elizabeth College in Kensington only because it was in Kensington. And if you're in the 1970s, a long time ago, Kensington was the place to be. And I didn't do very much work for a while. But fortunately, I, I did at the end. And it wasn't until the end of my degree that I realised I wanted to do research. And the reason was I started to do a research project. And I think biology is such a practical subject. Somebody once said to me, learning biology without doing experiments is like learning to drive a car from reading the manual without actually doing it. And that absolutely turned me on. So I then um, did a PhD. And I, actually, I worked on obesity for the early part of my career and then went on to do a DSC. Um, the biggest change in my career, because I still didn't know what I was going to do, was that... Um, I got a fellowship, I wasn't made a fellow then, I wasn't made a fellow until later, from the Royal Society in London, which was fantastic because they give you the money to let you work on what you want, where you want. It's just brilliant. And so I then decided after nearly uh, 14 years in London that I would move back to Manchester. Uh, you might be able to tell I'm from not too far from here, and set up an independent group. And, and that was quite hard because you have to think, what am I going to work on? Who am I going to work with? Uh, and and the, one of the single most important things I learned during that period is that while people think that science is lonely and boring, it absolutely is not, because nearly everything you do is collaborative. Maybe not for mathematicians, but certainly for biologists. We work in teams together, and it's choosing those collaborators that is critically important. And success is based on choosing the right project, important project, being in the right place. I was very lucky to come to the University of Manchester with fantastic facilities and choosing the people you work with. And, and in any career you choose, and I hope it will be science because it's incredibly exciting, it lets you travel the world and so on, mentors, networks and impact. Choose people to advise you. Choose people who are wise and thoughtful. <coughs> make sure you network properly with the right people. And make sure that you choose things that will have an impact. If you study an unimportant problem, you'll get an unimportant answer. But if you choose something really important to study, you'll find important answers. And finally, Julia mentioned that I, I uh, uh, happened to have another job. Um, don't know how this happened, because I always wanted research fellowships because I said I'd never wanted an admin job. Well, in 1996, somebody persuaded me to be research dean of the um, school I was part of in the university. In 2004, when there was the merger of the two universities in Manchester, we got a new vice chancellor, Alan Gilbert, he asked to see me for breakfast and he said, would I become uh, the vice president for research for your university? Fantastic offer. And I said, no. And he spent a week persuading me and I eventually succumbed and thoroughly enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. In 2007, I became deputy president and then last year, uh, president and vice chancellor. Um, I don't like to think about this, but just to give you an idea of scale, 800 million pounds turnover at the university and nearly 50,000 people. It's like a town nearly 40,000 students and 10,000 staff. But if I think about that too much, it uh, makes me nervous. And uh, Julian did also mention that public communication is a great hobby of mine. Let's you meet some fantastic people. I recognise David Attenborough, who is just as lovely as he seems on television. Believe me, he is delightful. But I'll leave you with the final slide and say thank you very much indeed.